Uh, I, I'd have to say that I'm really excited to see the involvement of industry. It's helped expand the field from one bench discoveries into many new opportunities. For example, the commercial availability of each of the resolvents has really enabled us to discover uh, for the entire field uh, new biology and put into place resolution physiology and resolution pharmacology. And likewise, from the nutritional side and from functional medicine, to have products that really substantially increase the production of pro-resolving mediators in vivo in humans, this is really uh, rewarding to see because it's enabled the field to grow past our own laboratory. I'm most proud uh, in looking back over my academic career at the, I've been very lucky not only to have a lot of really good colleagues and outstanding investigators working with me, but I've had many uh, students and fellows who have followed the track to academic discovery and they have their own laboratories and they've made you know, substantial contributions and I'm really happy about that. Uh, from the scientific side, um, I continue to be amazed at uh, how the system works and what we're learning each, each time about how the resolvents work and each class of new lipid mediators and how they're all intertwined but they seem to be working together to push us to a healthier state, a, a better state of wellness, uh, a state of uh, resolution and homeostasis. One of the most interesting things that I can tell you about uh, today discovery that the vagus nerve can actually make lipid mediators. And the vagus nerve is uh, the 10th cranial nerve that comes from the brain, as you know. But it, 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 it sits in communication to every major organ in the viscera. And it's been known for quite a long time that if you cut that vagus, the amplitude of the inflammatory response is heightened. And that was discovered by a neurosurgeon, a fellow by the name of Kevin Tracy. And I got very interested in his, his work and we started to read about uh, vagotomy and learned early on that if we look at inflammation in vivo in a mouse model and carry out a vagotomy, we actually saw that the resolution phase was altered and that we could correct that alteration by adding back a resolvent. And so carrying that forward, we were able to um, get uh, human vagus, which uh, is a, a bit of a challenge. And as you know, several electrical stimulating devices are approved and uh, mostly for the use of epilepsy in Europe and in the United States for pain and for headaches. And I got very interested in this as well as personally interested in transcranial uh, stimulation, which involves uh, uh, creating a circuit and activating uh, with electrical uh, pulses uh, the, the brain itself. So we got a device like this and um, electrically stimulated ex vivo uh, sections of the human vagus. And we were really surprised to see that we could enhance the production of resolvents and pro-resolving mediators from the vagus itself. The vagus directly makes these mediators. And the big surprise is that they make prostaglandins, pro-inflammatory mediators that are known to play an important role in pain and, and also in pain sensitization, as well as the leukotrienes. And the electrical stimulation blocked 
the production of prostaglandins and leukotrienes, which was, uh, I, I still find that to be quite amazing because it's, it's, it suggests that the electrical stimulation regulating ion channels in the vagus nerve has the ability to switch the lipids that are released from the membrane and turn off production of pro-inflammatory medias. And one of the most fascinating things that we saw with uh, two fellows in my group, uh, postdoctoral fellows, uh, Charlotte Jovine and uh, Javier De La Rosa, is that the vagus nerve makes uh, cystinyl leukotriene, which is known to be very important in asthma. And this is the first documentation that the vagus could make any of these mediators. And now we're seeing that they make mediators that are known to be important in smooth muscle contraction in the airway. And the reason why I'm really excited about that is because it's telling us that there are other functions of those lipid mediators. And that if we, over the next few years, have the opportunity to study this in further detail, that we'll be able to work out the mechanisms and the selective uh, uh, electrical impulses that are needed to trigger the production uh, of specific mediators. And that's what I hope to accomplish over the next few years. What we need to learn in the next 25 years about uh, what we think uh, the resolvents might be doing in the breast milk, there are really two different uh, sets of questions to address. Do, are they playing a role in quiescing inflammation in the breast itself, for example, uh, uh, during breastfeeding, for example, there's in inflammation that can occur? Uh, or is this part of a delivery system to educate the GI track of the newborn, and I think that that's uh, exciting for us to look into, as well as differentiating further between sites where there appears to be constitutive production of uh, pro-resolving mediators, for example, in the bone marrow and uh, in emotional tears places where we've seen uh, high levels of resolvents and we, we're not sure how they get activated. Um, so th that represents the horizon for uh, the endogenous production. In terms of making razor-sharp therapeutic tools and new drugs, we need to learn a lot more about the receptors and how the receptors become upregulated and how they become downregulated, and uh, that I think constitutes uh, at least a lifetime's work uh, for m a few a few groups, uh, as well as uh, thinking about how to inc increase our nutritional basis to get us back to the type of uh, Paleolithic uh, nutrition where we ate a lot more from uh, the oceans than we do today, uh, and, and which we can, you know, get the substrates from for EPA, DHA, and N3DPA, and really understand how they're processed selectively in different organs. We, we at today, we think that there's like sort of one blueprint that fits all, and I, I don't really think that that's going to hold up in the future. And as we learn different organ distributions, and about the selective specific SPMs that work in those organs, then we'll be able to design uh, better nutritional components, better functional foods, better therapeutics, and it's all about when and where, and we need to map out the entire resolution physiology so we can understand how to make precision resolution pharmacology. Sometimes it takes one moment, a, a eureka moment, to open the door to a different way of thinking. But to really enable that and to take it to the next level, it takes many, many people, many investigators, many people dedicated to the overall mission. And I think we're very lucky at this time to start to see that mission be enabled by 
many companies and many investigators. So I feel very confident with the next generation of investigators, this will become main staple, fundamental information that they'll carry forward and maybe even break it through to the next level.